I present actually an overview, a summary of Alzheimer's disease, which is a huge field. So I try to present the highlights of the field. What we have learned in the last 30 years, what we have accomplished uh, from the point of view of understanding the disease, which is a neurodegenerative disorder, understanding the uh, way neurons die and why these neurons drop out, why they degenerate, and how, how can we rescue them. So that was, that, that was part of my talk. In addition, I talked about therapeutic efforts. What efforts we have made, the scientific community has made, to find cures or treatments for the disease, and what were our successes and also our failures, and why? And how can we go on in the future in uh, maximizing our successes and minimizing our failures, okay? So, and then I also talked about how, we, how can we detect the disorder in a way that we do not need uh, a, a, a pathological examination of the patient because today we are unable to definitely diagnose Alzheimer's disease while the patient is still alive. Because even if the patient has dementia, that is in itself, it's not enough. Although it's a very strong indication that the patient may have Alzheimer's disease, it's not a definite diagnosis. So, it, because there are other causes that can cause dementia and forgetfulness mm -hmm. in patients. So, a way to uh, make sure that the patient died from this specific neurodegeneration, that it's called Alzheimer's disease, we have to have a post-mortem examination of his brain and look for specific structures that we called neuritic plaques and neurofibrillary tangles have these strange names. So if we see those lesions in the brain and combine, combined with the dementia that the fellow had while he, while he was still alive, the combination of these findings, of the clinical findings, of the clinical picture of the patient and the neuropathological examination, we can say that for sure this guy died from Alzheimer's disease. So we still do not have a way to have a test, a blood test, for example, okay, and say, look, in the blood we detect this chemical, so therefore this patient has Alzheimer's disease. We, we, we do not have that yet. So, so, so there is a huge effort in USA and also in Europe, in Japan and other countries to find ways to diagnose the disease without being um, uh, obliged to go to neuropathological examination. We made a tremendous progress in the last 30 years, but this is a very, very complicated disorder and it's going to take a long time until really we understand it in, in its entirety, in, entirely. But we do understand lots of, of, uh, of, th of uh, knowledge we have now that we did not have before we started all, all this uh, uh, research. So we have learned a lot and we hope that in the next 10 years we are going to be able to even have at least some treatments for, for the disorder. So this is, this is really a generational uh, effort. It doesn't take one generation. It will take several generations, like cancer, to cure Alzheimer's disease. It's not something that's going to give us. Nature is very complicated, and, and it does not give up its secrets so easily. Alzheimer's disease has two forms. The familial form, which means a genetic form, as we mentioned. And we know the genes that cause it. And then there is another form called the sporadic, the sporadic form of the disease, which means that, that it does not have obvious genetic etiology. But this does not mean that genes are not involved in the, even the sporadic. 
So genes are involved in both, in the familial form, which also early onset, meaning that, that we see even young people that may, be, uh, may have the disease, okay? The disease may uh, familially AD occur even in, in young people. And then we have the sporadic AD that occurs in older people over the age of 65 or 70. So the familial AD is completely genetic, okay? In other words, what it means, it means that if there is a change in one gene, okay, that change is enough to cause Alzheimer's disease at a certain age, like 30 or 40 or 50 years of age, okay? Now, in the familial form, we, don't, we do not have these causative agents. We have risk factors. In other words, factors that may predispose for the disease, but it's a matter of, of probabilities. We don't know if, we, if you have a risk factor, you'll definitely you'll get the disease. We cannot say that. You may have the risk factor and never get the disorder. Or you may get the disorder, but, but you may not have the risk factors. So it's a much more complicated situation with a sporadic AD, which is actually the more common form. 90% of all forms are sporadic, and only a small fraction, or 10% or less, is familial. This is a very nice cong uh, uh, congress, the genetis, as you call it, uh, because it brings people together from many different parts of the world. And that's very useful because science and scientific knowledge is being modulated with the discussion between scientists. So this is very important. There's no question about that. That's why uh, many countries spend an enormous amount of money bringing scientists together because they know it's important. So there's no question about the fact that this is important. Thank you.